Hello everyone, my name is Samuel Kusunawijaya and in this video I will explain the analysis of the poem Love's Philosophy by Percy B. Seeley. So before I start the explanation, let me read the biography of Percy B. Seeley. So, Percy B. Seeley was born on August 4 in 1792 at Field Place near Horsham, Sussex, England. England. The eldest son of Timothy and Elizabeth Silly, with one brother and four sisters. He stood in line to inherit not only his grandfather's considerable estate, but also a seat in the parliament. He attended Eton College for six years, beginning in uh, 1804, and then went to the Oxford University. He began writing poetry while at Eton, but his first publication was a gothic novel, Zastrozzi, in which he voiced his own heretical and aesthetic opinions through the villain Zastrozzi. That same year, Sally and another student, Thomas Jefferson Hope, published a pamphlet of burlesque verse, posthumous fragments of Margaret Nicholson, and with his sister Elizabeth, Sally published original poetry by Victor and Cesar in 1811. Sally continued this prolific outpouring with more publications, including another pamphlet that he wrote and circulated with Hawk, titled The Necessity of Atheism. Necessity of Atheism, which got him expelled from Oxford after less than a year. Sally could have been reinstated if his father had intervened, but this would have required his disavowing the pamphlet and declaring himself a Christian. Sally refused with sleep to complete a break between him and his father. This left him in dire financial straits for the next two years. So, at, uh, at age 19, Sally eloped to Scotland with 16-year-old Harriet Westbrook. Once married, Sally moved to the Lake District of England and studied to write. Two years later, he published his first long serious work, Queen Map, a philosophical poem. The poem emerged from Sally's friendship with the British philosopher William Godwin and it expressed Godwin's free-thinking socialist philosophy. Silly also became enamored of Godwin and Mary Wollstone's great daughter Mary and in 1814 they eloped to Europe. After six weeks out of money, they returned to England in November 1814. Harriet Sally bore a son and in February 18 15, Mary Godwin gave birth prematurely to a child who died two weeks later. The following January, Mary bore another son named William. After her father in May, the couple went to Lake Geneva, where Shelley spent a great deal of time with George London, Lloyd Byron, sailing on Lake Geneva and discussing poetry and other topics, including ghosts and spirits, into the night. During one of these ghostly scenes, Byron proposed to its person present to write a ghost story, so Mary's contribution to the contest became the novel Frankenstein. That same year, Sally produced the first Allegory Alastair, The Spirit of Solitude. In December 1819, Harriet Shelley apparently committed suicide. Three weeks after her body was recovered from a lake in a London park, Sally and Mary Godwin officially married. Sally lost custody of his two children by Harriet because of their adherence to the nation of pre love. So in 1817, Sally produced Lyon and Sidna, a long narrative poem that, because it contained references to incest as well as attacks on religion, was withdrawn after only a few copies were published. It was later edited and reissued The Revolt of Islam. At this time, he also write, wrote a revolutionary political tract, signed The Hermit of Marlowe. Then, early in 1818, he and his new wife, 
left England for the last time. During the remaining four years of his life, Sally produced all his major works, including the lyrical drama Prometheus Unbound, traveling and living in various Italian cities. The Sallys were friendly with the British Pope, like Han and his family, as well as with Byron. So, on July 2, on July 8, 1822, shortly before his 30th birthday, Sally was drowned in a storm while attempting to sail from Leghorn to La Spezia, Italy, in his schooner, the Don Juan. Okay, now we're moving to the analysis of the free tree, but before I analyze it, let me recite it first for you. So, Love's Philosophy by Percy B. Silly. The fountains mingle with the river, and the rivers with the ocean. The winds of heaven mix forever with a sweet emotion. Nothing in the world is single, all things by law defined. In one spirit mid and mingle, why not I with thine? See the mountains kiss high heaven, and the waves clasp one another. No sister flower would be forgiven, if it disdain its brother. And the sunlight clasps the earth, and the moonbeams kiss the sea. What is all this sweet work worth, if thou kiss not me? So, Love's Philosophy by Percy B. Sealy is a two stanza poem that follows a rhyme theme of A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, and so on till the last lines. So, the form of each stanza is an octet, so two, co uh, two octet and two stanza. Uh, this poem is a romantic lover's playful argument putting forward his case for the union of love. So natural imagery and strong rhyme appeal to the reader's senses, presenting this relationship as something innocent, simple, and inevitable. Philosophy here means an argument or a way of thinking. Okay, now we're moving to the analysis of the poem. So the brief summary is, love's philosophy takes the form of a speaker putting forward an argument to a prospective lover trying to persuade them to kiss him so he personifies the natural world and compares himself to it passionately passionately so the synopsis is initially rcp silly declares facts about examples of couples in nature and then asks why he is not in a relationship in the second stanza Percy B. Silly fixates on examples of physical intimacy in nature and then asks why he doesn't have the same experience. So now we're moving to the analysis of the stanza. So the fountains mingle with the river. Percy B. Silly establishes the theme of nature from the outset which is common for romantic poetry. The idea of fountains mingling with rivers evokes basic imaginative implying that is only natural from them to be together. And then in the second lines of the first stanza, and the rivers with the ocean. So in this, the ocean is a typically feminist motif in poetry. So by including this image, the speakers out that the woman he loves could be inferred. And then in the four lines, in the first stanza, with a sweet emotion. So the connotations of sweets imply that the speaker experiences tender affection. And then on the sixth line, all things by a law define. This links back to the title in which Sallis compares his lack of love with a philosophical argument, and his paradoxically reducing the massive, illogical concept of love to a straightforward step-by-step -step play. And then on the last lines in the first stanza, why not I with thine? Here, 
the reader learns for the first time that the speaker is experiencing unrequited love and the monosyllabic nature of this line add to its impact making the stanza more persuasive this is the first time the pronoun i is referenced which suggests the speaker is relying on the impact of natural imagery to convince the woman he wants to be in a relationship in that she should be with him and then we're moving to the second stanza see the mountains kiss high heaven so the mountains kiss high heavens is the use of pathetic fallacy and assonance suggests how natural and simple it be it will be for them to be together and the second line of the second stanza and the waves clasp one another so in this the class has highly sensual connotations and the soft sibilance in it they not say the loving so intimate connection as well as continuing the semantic field of embrace and then on the third lines no sister flower will be forgiven if it disdain its brother uh, these are innocent image so may imply the young nature of the relationship or perhaps perceivably is suggesting the relationship is natural and shouldn't be forced they are destined or born to be together and then we're moving again and the sunlight clasps the earth and the moonbeams kiss the sea so sunlight and moonbeams from antithesis which shows the overwhelming nature of the speaker's desire he is passionate both night and day and day and then we're moving again what is all this sweet work word so the sweet work word is difficult to say implying that he, the speaker is beginning to feel despondent about the lack of reciprocity of his love and then the last line on the second stanza is if thou kiss not me so the poem culminates with a question so the listener is provided no catharsis perceivably use of questions is also indicative of the persuasive style of the poem monosyllables are also used here to reinforce the speaker's argument kiss is repeated throughout the poem to emphasize the speaker's desire Okay, now we're moving to the perspective analysis. So, love's philosophy is written in the first person as Percy B. C. Lee is able to speak from his own experience. So, this narrative perspective also adds to the intimacy of the sentiment expressed by the speaker. And for the structure, uh, the philosophical argument in its stanza, Percy B. C. Lee builds up evidence as as if he is constructing a philosophical argument and ends with a rhetorical question so in the first stanza he sips from the declarative the fountains mingle with the river to the rhetorical why not i with thine this question is in contrast with the rest of the poem and acts to highlight the difference between that between what Sally has just described and his actual actual situation and for the repetition basically repeatedly use the anapora the anapora of and the waves and the rivers and the sunlight and the moonbeams which could be used to constantly imply the importance of nature in a romantic and sexual relationship throughout the poem Perseverantly employs lexis from the semantic field of embrace, for example, mingle, mix, kiss, clasp, are repeated throughout the different stanzas, which emphasizes the fact that the speaker wishes he had an intense, intimate, and physical relationship with the woman he is addressing in the poem, and stresses the importance of physical togetherness. Now we're moving to the form and matter. 
Okay, now we're moving to the matter analysis. So, the first line in the first stanza, the fountains mingle with the river. Uh, the word the has one syllable and it's stress. So, how to read it is, recite it is the. And then the second word is fountains. Fountains. So, the stress syllables is in the phone and the unstressed syllable in the taints. And then the third word, mingle, mingle, uh, mingle. The ming is stress and the gl is unstressed. Wit, wit is stress and then de in, uh, is unstressed. Unstress. And then the last word in the first line is weaver, weaver. We is in stress and then ver is in unstressed. So. In this first lines, there is one spondai and three iambic. There is one spondai and three iambic, so it's monometer spondai, trimeter iambic uh, plus unstressed syllables in the last one. And then the second lines, and the weavers with the ocean. The word and is is written in stress so and the second word the and the reverse the is in unstress and then the reverse is reverse the stress is in the re and then the unstress is in the first with with is written in unstress so with uh, and then the the is in unstress and then ocean 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 has two syllables and the stress syllables is in the o and then the unstressed syllables in the sin so in the uh, the form of the second lines is tetrameter torchai it has four couples and it's torchai all torchai now we're moving again to the third lines the wings of heaven mix forever uh, in here the is in unstress and then wings has one syllable and then it's all you read it in stress and then off has one syllable is it is in unstress heaven heaven has two syllables and the stress syllables is in the Hey, heaven, in the heaven, mix. The word mix is in, uh, is in stress syllables, and then four, four is in unstress. Ever, ever has two syllables, and the stress syllables is in the a, v. So in this third lines, it is tetrameter iambic plus unstress syllables. Then we're moving to the fourth lines with a sweet emotion. With has only one syllables and it's on stress syllables. A uh, uh is in unstressed and then sweet. Sweet is in stress syllables and then emotion. Emotion has three syllables and then the stress syllables is in emo. Mo in mo. And then in this four lines, it is trimeter trochei. And now we're moving to the fifth lines. Nothing in the world is single. Nothing has two syllables, and the stress syllables is in no. And then in in has one syllables, and it's in stress. So in the the is in unstress world world has only one syllables and it is written in stress syllables is is only one syllables and it's written in unstressed is and then the last one is single single has two syllables and the stress syllable is in sing so in this in this fifth lines it is a tetrameter trochai and then we're moving to the six lines 
all things by a law divine so this all has only one syllables and it's written in stress syllables and then things only one only one has only one syllables and it's unstressed by by it's has only one syllables and it's uh, stress syllables uh, uh has only one syllables and it's uh, unstressed low low has only one syllables also and then it's in stress divine divine has only two syllables and then the stress syllables is in vine divine so in the six lines it is three meter troche plus stress one stress syllables and then in the sec seven seven line in one spirit meet and mingle so in has only one syllables and it's in stress and then one one only has one syllables and it's also a uh, uh, in one spirit uh, unstressed and then spirit has only two syllables and the stress syllables in spi spi read so and then meet meet has only one syllables and it's in un is in stress and then n and is has only one syllables and it's in unstressed and then mingle mingle ha only mingle has two syllables and the stress syllables is in ming so in the seven lines it is a tetrameter troche then the eight lines uh, the last line in the first stanza why not I resign? Why not I resign? Why is in stress syllables and then not not is in unstress. I in uh, in stress and then wit is unstress and dine has only one syllables also and then it's written in stress syllables and then the last the last lines in the first stanza it's a uh, Demeter trochaic plus one stress syllables. Okay, now we're moving to the second stanza. See the mountains, kiss high heaven. So, the first word C is has only one syllables and it's in stress, and the D has only one syllables also and it's in unstress. Mountains. Mountains has uh, two syllables and the stress syllables is in mon, mountains. Then kiss, kiss has only one syllable and it's in stress. High, high is in unstress and then heaven, well, it's two syllable and the stress syllable is in he, heaven. So the first line in the second stanza is a uh, tetrameter troche. Now and the second lines. And the waves class one another. The first word and has only one syllables and it is a uh, stress syllables and then the is also one syllables has only one syllables and it's on um, unstress the then waves waves one syllables and it's in un, it's, and it is in stress then clasp has one syllables and it's in unstress one one only has one syllables and it's in stress and the last word is another another has three syllables and the stress syllables is in the another in ano so this is a, a tetrameter church now we're moving to the third lines in the second stanza no sister flower would be forgiven uh, the first word no has only one syllables and it's stress then sister has two syllables and the stress syllable syllable is in third sister and then flower only has 
only has has two syllables and then the stress syllable is in wa flow wa and then wood uh, is in unstress and then b b is stress forgiven has three syllables and the stress syllable is in gi for given so in this third line in the second stanza it is a pentameter trochek and then the third i'm sorry and the fourth lines in the second stanza if it disdain its brother so if only has one syllables and it's in stress and then it it is unstress and then disdain disdain has two syllables and the stress syllables is in the dain disdain and then it's is it has one syllables and it's in unstress then brother brother has two syllables and the stress syllables in the bro brother and then in this fourth lines in the second stanza is a monumental dactylic plus Demeter troche and then the fifth lines on the second stanza and the sunlight clasp the earth and and has only one syllable and it's in stress and then the the has one syllables and uh, it's in unstress and then sunlight sunlight has two syllables and the stress syllables is in sun sunlight and then class class has one syllable and it's um and stress and then the has only one syllables and it's in unstress or er is has only one syllables and it's in stress so in the fifth lines and the second stanza is a three meter troche plus stress one stress syllables and then we're moving again and the moonbeams kiss the sea in the sixth lines so n is in stress and then the is in unstress moonbeams has two syllables and the stress syllable is in the moon moon beams and then kiss kiss only one syllables and it's in stress and the has only one syllables it's in unstress and c is also one syllables and it's in stress so in the six lines of the second stanza is a three meter troche plus one stress syllables and the seven lines on the second stanza what is all this sweet work word what has only one syllable and it's in stress and then is is has only one syllable and it's unstress and then all all is has only one syllable also and it's written in stress syllables and then this this has only also one syllable and it's in unstress sweet one syllables and it's in stress and then work is in unstress and then work has only one syllable and it's in stress so in the seven lines in the second stanza is a three meter troche plus one stress syllables and then the last lines in the second stanza if thou kiss not me if has only one syllables and it's in stress then thou has only one syllables also and it's in unstress kiss is in one syllable is has only one syllables and it's in stress not has only one syllables and it's uh, unstressed and then me the last word is has only one syllables and it's in stress so uh, the last line in the second stanza is a uh, dream Demeter troche plus one stress syllables okay I think that's all from this video I have already explained about love philosophy by Percy about the analysis from the biography until the last one the meter analysis i think 
that's all i hope you guys all enjoy and then understand what i'm trying to explain to you guys thank you so much for watching this video